All right, so yesterday at the end of the show, we had this guy call in, and he was hating on us for playing all these Joe Biden gaffes, as you pointed out. And he said, is that all you got? Is that all you got on Joe Biden gaffes? Come on, Markay. That's not going to—you can't win an election just by saying Joe Biden makes gaffes. Well, look, we have a lot of fun with the gaffes because, A, they make him sound ridiculous, and we like to laugh at other people because it makes us feel better about ourselves and our own, um, and our own uh, you know, problems. But and, and the second thing is the gaffes are really important because they are, they are just one symptom of a much larger problem. Somebody who makes this many gaffes this often, somebody who, I mean, we tune in to anything Joe Biden now, not for substantive and concrete information about what a Joe Biden presidency would look like. We tune in to see what he's going to screw up because we know, as many people do, that nothing, you know, he, his mind isn't working the way a younger, more, a more mentally capable person's mind would be working. It, basically, he's older, he's elderly. There seems to be some kind of cognitive problem there, maybe a little bit of, you know, decay. Uh, you, you know, like I said, we don't know, we don't have any concrete medical information because they won't provide any, but we can watch and see. The gaffes are a huge problem because what the Joe Biden gaffes means is that the Democrats are using Joe Biden to uh, commit a massive fraud on the American people and the American electorate. What they're trying to do is prop up Joe Biden as somebody they are trying to sell you as the next president of the United States, when we all know he's not mentally capable or physically able to be the president of the United States. He can't even campaign for the job. There's no way in the hell that he'd be able to actually execute the job. And we've seen yesterday, we saw some little tidbits of Kamala Harris saying it was a Harris administration. We know, we get the reminders. We understand that there are people working in the backgrounds control Joe Biden and his job is just to go out there put his name on the on the placard and just somehow get more votes than Donald Trump after that we don't know who's running the country we don't know it's not going to be Joe Biden we know that for a fact it's not going to be him it may be Kamala Harris it may be the Clintons it may be Obama it may be whoever he picks as his chief of staff which is the second most powerful person in the White House after the president of the United States. And we don't know who that person's going to be. What if it's Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren or some other kooky left-wing socialist? There's a serious problem. You are trying to sell people on Joe Biden being the president of the United States when he won't be if he wins. That's fraud. That is a fraud. Donald Trump is running as president. Donald Trump will be president. Everybody knows what kind of president Donald Trump will be. He is, that is out in the open. That is, that is, the, that is how you run a campaign. You put your candidate out there, and when your candidate wins, you make sure they're the ones calling the shots. Because that's who the people, that, you know, if you're going to sell us a candidate, then we want to buy that candidate, and we, we, we want you to deliver that candidate. And with Joe Biden, they can't do that. That's why the gaffes are the gaffes are more important to, to this election than some of Joe Biden's horrible, uh, you know, history in, in Washington, D.C. The gaffes are more important than some of the other terrible things he's going to do. But no, to answer that guy's question and to answer yours, uh, the gaffes aren't all we have on Joe Biden. I mean, we can talk about how uh, he used American taxpayer dollars to strong arm and, and blackmail the government of the Ukraine to keep his son's company from being investigated for fraud. So we could do that. We could talk about that, Joe Biden. We could discuss how Joe Biden and Barack Obama closed factories, shipped manufacturing jobs out to Mexico, out to, uh, to India, out to China, how he sold out this country. And then when the jobs disappeared, said they'll never come back. You guys should go and learn how to code. Same with the coal mining jobs. Same with the fracking jobs, which he said he was going to get rid of. But now when he realizes he could lose Pennsylvania by saying that, he miraculously no longer thinks is a problem. Same with his mask mandate. Joe Biden doesn't even know what's in the Constitution of the United States that as president, he would be sworn to uphold. He would be sworn to uphold the Constitution of the United States, and he doesn't even know that it's unconstitutional to mandate that everybody wear a mask. Only several weeks later, when somebody who actually has read the document taps him on the shoulder and says, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, that's unconstitutional. Does he change his tune? And now it's no longer a mandate. It's a standard. We could talk about the systemic racism that flows through Joe Biden's body, the microaggressions and the racist remarks that he tells openly to black voters. Like, if you don't vote for me or if you can't figure out to vote for me, you ain't black. Or uh, we all know that Latino people are a much more diverse community than the African-American community. What does that even mean? 
Why does he say that? He, this is a guy who, when he was in the Senate, fought day and night as hard as he could to keep Clarence Thomas off of the bench. He fought against a black Supreme Court justice. Do you know how many black Supreme Court justices there have been in history? You can count them all on one hand. And if, it were, and if Joe Biden got his way, there would be one fewer. We can talk about how he wants to defund the police, how he wants to disarm them, how he wants to funnel the money to mental health organizations, and then how he goes ahead and lies about it when we have him on tape saying, absolutely, we, would, we could totally defund the police and put the money toward mental health departments that could show up at the scene of a knife-wielding mad madman and disarm him better than a police officer with a gun. This is the Joe Biden we could talk about. We can talk about the way he's going to tax you astronomically and use the money that you want to use for your family, for your savings, for your retirement, for your home, for your kids' college education. He wants to take that money and he wants to spend it on ridiculous stuff like the Green New Deal. <laughs> we can talk about all that Joe Biden stuff. We just choose to talk about the gaffes because, number one, they are symptomatic of the biggest issue that faces the United States when looking to vote for Joe Biden, and that is the man can't handle the job. And also, they're super funny.